Hello and welcome. What does democracy mean to you, and is it always the best way to govern? More than 100 countries use the democratic model of leadership, but it seems to be a system that's open to questionable interpretation, leaving many wondering if democracy is dying. Democracy is meant to be a system where the majority rules, law and order prevails, and checks and balances are enforced. In headlines across the world, the voice of democracy is being both suppressed and heard, depending on which side of the fence you sit. Uh, for example, last week the elected president of Honduras, Manuel Zelaya, was deposed by the military and exiled for violating the constitution. Despite the interim government defending its actions as protecting the rule of law, the country has been internationally condemned for taking a step back from democracy. In the West African state of Niger, President Mamadou Tanja dissolved the constitutional court after it rejected plans to extend his term in office. The United States and international community has condemned Mr. Tanja, who has set his referendum for the 4th of August. Well, considering just these examples, it's easy to ask whether or not democracy is a sure sign for a country's success. This year, five countries in Africa topped foreign policy's list of failed states. Somalia, Zimbabwe, Sudan, Chad, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The common challenges these nations face are poor governance and a dwindling economy, and all are struggling with social ills and effectively implementing democracy. Is a strong push for representative politics a solution for failed states? And what failed country should be a priority for global assistance when so many need it? On today's show, we look at the evolving meaning of democracy. Now, remember, you can join the conversation with your questions and comments. Log on to livestation.com forward slash AJE. Enter the chat room and take part, and we also welcome your phone calls on the show. Joining me from our studios in London is John Keane, who is ranked by the Times of London as one of Britain's leading political thinkers and writers, with work that has a, quote, worldwide importance. He's a member of the American-based Institutions of Democracy Commission and has just completed a full-scale history of democracy, the first for over a century. He's the author of several books, the latest of which, The Life and Death of Democracy, questions whether or not democracy can survive in its current form. Here with me in the studio is Ted Danier, a specialist in African affairs at the Foreign Affairs, Defense and Trade Division of the Congressional Research Service. He's written over 2,000 major studies on Africa, including reports on the war on, on terror in Africa, the state of democracy, conflict resolution, and humanitarian disasters. Gentlemen, I welcome you to the show. And Professor Keane, if I could start with you there in London, what would you say is the best measure of a successful democracy? Whether the exercise of power, uh, obviously at the governmental level, but also at the non-governmental level, is subject to public controls. That is probably uh, the most succinct uh, one-sentence definition that I can come up with. Uh, democracy uh, is humility. It is uh, the prevention of hubris, the prevention of arrogance of power wherever, wherever it is exercised. Well, Professor, if you look around at the situation of democratic nations around the world, would you say that democracy is dying? It's a tough question, and uh, it's, very, it's very tempting to just answer it very simply. Uh, I th certainly think, uh, contrary to all of the fanfare about democracy promotion and the global triumph of democracy, Francis Fukuyama's argument of the end of history, in contrast to that period, there are certainly some canaries in the coal mine shaft of democracy. We see... Um, examples of what in Washington is called democracy pushback. Uh, these uh, Persian, Siamese little tigers, Iran, uh, Burma. We also see the malfunctioning uh, pathologies of democracy in countries otherwise as different as Italy, Berlusconi's Italy, uh, or for example uh, Chavez in Venezuela. So uh, short answer is that um, the, the current trends are mixed, but there's no doubt that there is a ground being gained by the critics and the enemies uh, of democracy, who, by the way, for the first time in the history of democracy, uh, usually describe themselves as Democrats. That's one of the tricky yeah. things about uh, the decline of democracy. We'll look at some of the examples. Ted Daniel, great to have you here as well. It's a pleasure. Now, it, it, as we were mentioning in the opening, that in the latest foreign policy report uh, of failed states, Africa comes out top of the list with five countries there at the top uh, that we listed, for example. And what is, it, what is it in particular about this continent that makes it so difficult to govern, that makes it so prone to bad governance? I think, you know, some of it is... Uh, indeed bad leadership, uh, poor governance, 
but it's also, I think, uh, in some ways, uh, lack of knowledge about the progress that have been made in Africa. You look at the top five in the current foreign policy magazine of failed states. Um, I look at Somalia, first question I would ask is, which part of Somalia? No. Uh, you have uh, Somaliland, which had at least several democratic elections. You had Puntland, uh, recently also had an election. But you also have South Central Somalia, where you have an ongoing conflict. But yet there had been a process, a transparent democratic process, that led to a peace agreement. The same thing, I think, one can make the argument under Mugabe, you had Zimbabwe, uh, mm -hmm. definitely a dictatorship, wanted to steal the elections from the opposition. However, they were able to reach an agreement. I was in Zimbabwe just two months ago. And uh, it's important to note that they have made some progress, uh, improvements on human rights conditions. And of course, yeah, there are successes as well. If you take Uganda, that, that really pulled its socks up and has, has been quite a good example of how things can improve, isn't it? Definitely. You look at across the continent, you have more uh, democracies in Africa than you had even just five years ago. Uh, the one-party rule or the military dictatorship of the past is mm -hmm. gone, is dead. But does it mean that having a multi-party democracy is true democracy? That's really the question. Mm -hmm. Professor Keane, uh, we had an email question that came in from Tanzania, if I could put this to you, sir. Um, it, uh, it comes from A. Harsi, who says, after the democratization of Iraq, we saw violence as an indispensable component of democracy. Why should this be the case? Well, it's an open question uh, whether Iraq can be included uh, in a democracy. And indeed, I think that the whole uh, uh, enforced so-called democratization of Iraq proved to be a failure, uh, in, in minimally in the sense of uh, bringing into disrepute the United States further into the region, of, uh, uh, I think, increasing many millions of, of people's uh, sense of the hypocrisy of democracy. And by the way, uh, that factor of hypocrisy was, it's not much talked about, but uh, it's crucially important. When millions of people feel in their gut that there is a wide gap between the promises of democracies like the United States or the European Union and others and the actual realities, the performances, it tends to turn them off. That happened, by the way, uh, on a large scale last time historically in the 1920s and 30s. So. Uh, I think uh, when the historians look back on the Iraqi occupation and the uh, pathway that was attempted, the methods that were used to try to bring democratization to kickstart it, um, I think the evidence is that mostly um, it was a string of mistakes. Mm. It's not the way to bring democracy uh, to a country. The violence, uh, of course, uh, was ruinous of uh, the nonviolent power sharing that, um, and the uh, respect for rights, civil society, rule of law, which is absolutely fundamental uh, to any definition of democracy and its uh, workability in practice. We've got Samsor on the line from the UK. Uh, Samsor, what's your question, please? Uh, yeah, good, uh, good evening. My question is that uh, nowadays uh, everywhere we hear the uh, democracy, word democracy, Allah, but as far as we see it, it is just a, a cover face of old actions. Like uh, old, uh, in ancient time, there was, pe uh, there was just taking the uh, food of the people of their lives, and they were used as a slave. Nowadays, we see by the name of democracy, there is uh, some colonists coming over, like in Afghanistan. Okay. In all those countries, Sa people are, uh, they put uh, slave governments there. Samso, Samso, the Samso, let me put this to Ted Dania because we're going to take a break in a second. This idea that basically democracy is being thrust upon some countries, uh, that, that it's not really democracy when it's forced upon people uh, according to other people's standards. If, if the U.S., for example, says it's bringing democracy or encouraging democracy in a country, that, that perhaps it's not really democracy. I think, you know, it's misreading, I think, the uh, democratic process in Africa. Nobody imposed democracy on Africa. I think the African people demanded uh, democratic rule, whether it's from Benin to Mali and other places. I think the imposition of a system, uh, long gone, and I think the people are demanding. You have institutions, civil society groups and others, who are demanding for more accountability in government.
Okay, well, Professor Keen and uh, Ted Daniel, I'm going to ask you both to stand by. We've got to take a short break here. As we pause, let me remind you, you can join the conversation with your questions and comments by logging on to livestation.com and entering the chat room. There's a debate uh, taking place in there right now, as you'll see. Now, before we take that break, we're uh, also taking a poll in our live station chat room where we're asking, should democracy be enforced at any cost? Let us know what you think, and we'll be back in a few moments with the result. Stop that again.